terrific story. Um, a lady, Mrs. Shepherd, lived on, um, lived in Camden, in her van. Asked Alan Bennett, at that point in his career, a fledgling writer, um, if she could, if she could park in his driveway for a couple of days to avoid a parking ticket, and she ended up staying for 15 years. Um, and it's their relationship over that time, and he becomes more successful as a writer. She's still in his driveway, still not saying thank you, and uh, it's how they get on. Dame Maggie Smith plays that uh, incomparable uh, woman. Can you talk a little bit about her performance and bring her onto the project? Oh, she well, she rip, no, originally was on in the stage production, um, so it was a question of like you know going back to her and saying, "Are you ready to do the film?" And if Alan's ready to write it and Nick's ready to direct it, and they all signed up for it, so uh, you know it was a privilege. Um, and the same with Alex Jennings to my left, who you know was a terrific Alan Bennett. Um, but yes, yeah, consummate professional, always surprises you with every take and her performance. And uh, yeah, I've worked with Meryl Streep and I've worked with Dame Maggie Smith, so uh, pretty good company. You just got to feel like hopefully we've succeeded in feeling like a movie. So uh, it's, you know, it's cinematic, it's grand themes, um, funny as hell. And we just opened it up. So, you know, we, yes, of course, we're in the house and the driveway, but we're also in many other parts of their lives and, and what was going on at the time. I think um, Anna was definitely very happy to use the house, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> um, and there was something sort of very touchy that we were using the original place where it all happened. And the residents of Gloucester uh, Crescent, I think they, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're very happy. With, they all signed up for it and thought it, you know, remember her, most of them fondly. Um, and we're happy that we uh, we're telling the story. There was a oh, yes, a little inconvenience for a few weeks, but uh, hopefully they've forgiven us. Well, it's friendship, home. Don't read a book by its cover. But first and foremost, most importantly, it's a comedy. You know, it's just, she's a cracking wit, has a particular sort of skewered view of the world, and you go with that. How does it feel to be part of the London Film Festival specific? I think it's my first time actually having a movie in it, so I'm thrilled. Um, I've tried a few times, so it's nice to have one in. Do you think the film has a uniquely British quality to it? Absolutely, absolutely. It's got, you know, the one of our greatest writers, greatest actresses, greatest director, and a, you know, really unique, sort of, quite sort of typically British eccentric tale. So, yes, quintessentially British, I think. So I have Dad's Army coming out um, in February and I am just started two days into absolutely fabulous The Movie. Ab Fab fans are going to kill me if I don't ask, what can we expect from their big screen adventure? <laughs> All sorts of shenanigans. <laughs> I won't tell you more, I'm afraid. Very fun, very silly and uh, yes, we'll surprise a few people with their latest antics. Of course, I mean, Dad's Army as well, a beloved British institution. Um, is there a lot of pressure on you re reintroducing that to a new generation? Uh, there was and there is. Um, but, you know, humbly, I think we've done it proud. We've shown it to the original co-creator and indeed uh, people who are, you know, frenzied fans. And we've got the thumbs up and essentially we've got a terrific cast who do a magnificent job. Well, it's very nice to be um, have the centerpiece gala, the mayor's gala. I've had the mayor's gala a couple of times before, but um, not in this nice big AD and Leicester Square Theatre. So it's very exciting to see our our little movie in there. I must say, and with a huge audience. You know, I haven't sat with an enormous London audience yet, so I'm really looking forward to it. A huge audience for a huge star, Dame Maggie Smith. Um, obviously, we're familiar with her on Downton, but this is fair to say a very different role. Can you tell us a bit about the character she transforms herself to in this one? Well, it's not the the Dowager Countess that we're used to seeing her in on Sunday nights. No, she's very much playing this extraordinary character of Miss Shepherd, who was, you know, a, a, a person who drove her van into Gloucester Crescent and uh, stayed there for the next 18 years. 15 of them in Alan Bennett's driveway, living in a van. Um, she was curmudgeonly, she was extraordinary. She was kind of fiercely intelligent, but in sort of very individual ways. She never said thank you. She drove Alan Bennett round the bend, I think, um, and a lot of the other residents of the street. But, you know, in the heart of all that role, there was an extraordinary, rather spiritual person and also a kind of tragedy in the making, I think. So, you know, it's, it's a very rich film in all those ways. 
Yeah, well, obviously the crux of it really is, is sort of a bit about the creative process and about what your responsibilities are to your subjects as a writer. And, you know, one of the things the character of Alan as the writer in the film grapples with is that kind of, you know, can you exploit somebody who, you know, is a real person who's living in your front drive, you know, and... and, and, and so I think there's a lot in the film that's about the process of artistic responsibility, about the process of creation, as well as a character study of Miss Shepherd. Do you think some of the themes will resonate, particularly given the current migrant crisis? Well, I think homelessness and rootlessness and people not being able to find stability and a sense of community, you know, those of us who have that are extremely fortunate and extremely lucky and... Um, you know, I think people may watch the plight of Miss Shepherd in this movie and it may bring home to them how difficult life is if you don't have those things. Well, I think you get a much more um, detailed um, version of, of Miss Shepherd uh, in the film than you would have done on the stage. You know, it's a very different kind of tonal register and it allows a lot more detail. And also you've got the great kind of privilege and fascination of seeing it kind of represented in the places that it actually happened so you know that's different for a start you talk about experiences filming on location i believe you had some trouble with your van we did have a little bit of trouble with our van because you know camden town is very um, lively at weekends and um and you know there are a few people there taking substances that probably they shouldn't and um we did come in one monday morning to find that you know rather like a uh sort of some sort of uh, burrow that some other people had thought it would be quite nice to spend the weekend in the van so we found there had been interlopers in the van and we had to clear it all out before we could put Dave Maggie back in it. Talking of interlopers if you were faced with the same dilemma as Alan what do you think you would have done? I s well as he says look if he'd known she was going to stay for 15 years he wouldn't have asked her in. Um, I don't think any of us would have been as generous and warm-hearted as Alan. I, I mean, I think we'd like to think we were, but the actual, you know, she'd lived outside his house for two years. He knew what he was getting into to some extent. I think Alex Jennings' performance as Alan Bennett, the writer, and Alan Bennett, the disgruntled landlord in the film, is quite an extraordinary one. And I think he's one of our very best and, and most kind of subtle actors, and I hope this film's going to kind of, you know, make people realise that we've got this other national treasure apart from Maggie Smith and Alan Bennett in our midst. Of course the film has a distinctly British character but do you think it has a global appeal? I hope so. I mean that's what we're banking on and, and Sony Pictures who are releasing the film I think feel that it will travel and look the experience of all these things is you know you don't try and make something for a global audience you make something that's truthful and and rooted in its time and its place and um and as long as it's got essential humanity audiences will respond to that and i think this film has humanity in spades it also has a great director behind the camera can you talk about um that choice well there wasn't there wasn't really a choice i mean only nicholas heidner would ever have directed this film and um you know he did it as with such subtlety and assurance that that he brings to all his work, both in the theatre and on film. So, as ever, it's been a great, great privilege to work with him. Is there a particular scene in the film that you think really captures the heart of the story, what it's really about? Um, the heart of the story? Yes, I think... Well, I think, you know, without wanting to, to give too much away, I think some of those scenes when she's finally taken away from the van, there's one section where she's taken away from the van and she goes to the day centre for the day. I find that one of the most moving sections of the film. I first worked with Alan Bennett uh, in 1990 and I've directed everything he's written for stage and screen since. Um, so very simply what fascinated me about it is that this is what was happening to Alan for the 20 years before I first knew him. It's a very true, it's a totally true story of this um, broken down old lady who parked her van in his drive uh, while she sorted herself out and then stayed for 15 years. Um, and uh, I used to see the van, I used to, I've, been, I've lived around Camden Town since I came to London in the mid 70s. I knew that's where Alan Bennett was. Um, and I discovered what was going on only after she died and now, um, now, uh, now it's a tremendous opportunity uh, to explore this very humane and very funny story for a, a wider audience. I've 
first worked with Alex in 1985. I first worked with Maggie in the mid 90s. So we know our way around each other. With actors that good, um, a lot of the time it's um, it's setting up the circumstances, seeing what they offer, and um, and choosing from a uh, from a variety of options. They're both extraordinarily inventive. They're both extraordinary, technically unbelievably assured, and very very um, truthful, uh, as well as very very funny actors. So when you've got actors like that to play with, um, honestly, the director's job is easy. Mickey Mouse could direct it. I put, I put his tie on, Alan's actual ties, um, put his jumper on, get the egg stain down the jumper, put the jacket on, um, put on a blonde, blonde wig and the glasses. There you are, Alan Bennett. <laughs> Mentally, I've known him for a long time, so and he's a friend, um, so that that's there's a, kind of a lot of backgrounds been done, I suppose. Um, and I've tried to imagine what it must have been like for him living with this terrible, stinky old woman in his driveway for 15 years. Incredible what he did. I worked with Maggie on stage, so um, I was kind of halfway there with that as well. I didn't have to sort of gain her respect or approval, I suppose. Uh, she's the best there is, and to um, be playing a kind of big part in a movie with her is, uh, has been a fantastic experience, wonderful experience. Do you feel like having made this film now, you maybe have a, a, an understanding of why Alan allowed her to remain in his life and in his driveway for so many years? I think it's, I think it's incredible that he allowed it to happen. Uh, Alan says it was laziness and... Um, indolence of disposition that you know it was easier to have her in his driveway and it enabled him to work because he wasn't worrying about her out on the street being hassled by um, by people uh, but he um, I've forgotten what the question was now that elbow came in <laughs> what did you what was the why did he let uh, he but I th given that he says all that I still think he's a kind person and there's a a level of kindness to to allow that terrible old person to, to park a van in his driveway. How do you feel seeing this extraordinary part of your own life brought to screen, and what do you think Miss Shepherd would have made of it all? Well, Miss Shepherd, I think, would have felt it, it was uh, it was adequate. Miss Shepherd would feel because she was so uh, uh, convinced of her own importance in the world that. Uh, uh, a mere film wouldn't do or do her justice. She, I mean, she used to write regularly to the Pope uh, and uh, get me to type letters to the Prime Minister. And so uh, a mere film was really wouldn't register with Miss Shepherd. Um, but uh, it's, I, it's, it's very good to see it in the sense that it's a very accurate description of what it was like and what she was like. Uh, so much so that now I can't really see anybody but Maggie, oh, I can't see Miss Shepherd's face, I see Maggie Smith's face, really. Yeah. I mean, it was an extraordinary relationship. Can you talk about how that began and what it meant to you in your own life? Um, well, it, it began through me uh, feeling that um, when she was in the street, people kept uh, teasing her and, and banging on the side of the van and doing all sorts of just ordinary mischief, really. Uh, but uh, I, I used to work in the bay window and so that when I was working I could see these things happening uh, and, um, and it got so that it distracted me from my work and so eventually I thought well the best thing to do is to get her in the garden where she's out of the way and uh, thinking it would be a matter of months and, but of course it turned out to be 15 years so. but that was my fault. Yeah.